Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty of the Chinese Imperial Era. China was not always as we imagine it today. Throughout its history, it witnessed democratic, socialist, communist, military, and dictatorship governments. Today, in History Dat, we will talk about the last empire that ruled the kingdom at the center, before the country became the Republic of China that still exists today. Let's get started. Predecessors, Ming Dynasty. To understand the Qing Empire perfectly, it is necessary to briefly know the history of the Ming Empire, the previous government and the history of the Manchus, who gave birth to the Qing Dynasty. The Ming Dynasty was born in the same way that the Qing Dynasty would be born years later, through a rebellion. They overthrew the Mongols who ruled China for almost 300 years. The Wan Dynasty, under the rule of Emperor Yongle, China experienced enormous territorial growth and prosperity. It was also under this government that the country's capital was moved to Beijing, which in Chinese means capital of the north. The economic prosperity and stability in this period was so great that the country experienced advances of all kinds. Even the engineering of the country enjoyed a great advancement. The Great War was fortified and the largest naval fleet ever seen was commanded during this period. The Ming Dynasty enjoyed great popularity throughout the region because of its powerful military. You have probably heard the name of this dynasty accompanied by the word Vars, and this is because great artistic advances were made under this dynasty, mainly in vases, which is to this day are still traded at very high prices. Predecessors Manchu. But that radiance did not last forever, and like all dynasties of the ancient Chinese Empire, the Ming Dynasty was overthrown. The first uprisings probably took place on the countryside and from there spread throughout the country. The Manchus, the aforementioned ethnic group, were responsible for overthrowing the Ming Dynasty in 1644. This name was chosen by the founder of the Qing Dynasty, as he did not want his ancestors to be historically related to the subjugation of the Ming Dynasty. These farming people had exceptional ingenuity for tasks of all kinds. They had abandoned nomadic life to settle as a kind of tribe. They had excellent skills in art, cultivation, fishing, hunting and falconry. The skill that most distinguished them at the time was their talent with horses. In fact, the Manchu were known in the region for their mastery of these animals, being even able to manipulate the bow and arrow while riding. Thanks to this ability, the rebellion against the Ming Dynasty was successful. Birth of the Qing Dynasty After several uprisings and a few years of war, the Manchus overthrew the Ming Dynasty. Although the Manchus sacked and occupied Beijing in 1644, the complete conquest took place only between 1683 and 1693, as much of the country opposed a change of government. In fact, this led to a violent war that may have cost the Qing Dynasty the throne. Prosperous Era Between 1683 and 1839, China experienced rapid growth despite facing several wars. The Qing Dynasty used much of the Confucian practices of the Ming Dynasty as they saw the great economic results they had had. In fact, their government never tried to destroy everything related to the predecessor dynasty. On the contrary, they used the best of the Ming Dynasty to continue advancing. This practice would become almost a standard for the Qing Dynasty. This innovative, prosperous and disruptive period is known as the Prosperous Era. Militia the army was entirely based on the political military system that the emperors of the Jin dynasty had designed, the Eight Banners. This system consisted of placing the different ethnic groups in different squadrons to increase productivity. In addition, all administrative matters concerning the state also responded to this system. The flags distinguished the aptitudes and abilities of the soldiers, besides marking a clear hierarchy. The top three flags were made up only of Manchu soldiers and were directly under the orders of the Emperor. If any soldier belonged to different ethnicities and wanted to belong to the Royal Guard, he had to undergo many tests and take several examinations. 
Incredibly, there was a decentralised army that had almost the same military preponderance as the three superior flags. This squadron was called the Army of the Green Banner and came to have more than 600,000 soldiers in service. Its functions at the beginning were only military, serving as foot soldiers in battle. But as time went on, they served the people as a kind of police force. Each member received a pay from the state, and annually they were rewarded according to the results of the battles fought. Form of Government As mentioned earlier, the Qing Dynasty recycled some concepts from the previous government. Its governmental structure was, in essence, the same as any empire. The emperor was the highest authority of the country in an absolutist sense. From him, there were six boards or ministries. Each of these boards consisted of two presidents and four vice presidents. To avoid social conflicts, the boards included some Mongolians and Han Chinese. Citizens could aspire to any state position if they demonstrated sufficient aptitude although there were some public bodies that were reserved only for the Manchu nobility. As time went by, power became more and more centralised in the emperor and the royal family. The six boards were as follows. Civil Appointments Board. This board managed all civil officials and state personnel. Board of Revenue. This board, as its name suggests, was in charge of collecting taxes from citizens. This activity was the main source of revenue for the dynasty. Board of Rights This board was not only in charge of liturgical matters, but also organised public ceremonies. Board of War Again, the activity of this board was homonymous. Its functions were mainly administrative as they had some authority over the army of the Green Banner, but they had no authority over the Eight Banners. Board of Punishments this board handled all legal matters in the country, although things were quite different in practice, since the emperor ended up giving the last word and his decision prevailed over any verdict. Board of Works The function of this board was simple in theory, since they only had to place state workers, but their work was much longer than that, since they had to evaluate the capabilities of each one, as well as constantly follow up to prevent disloyalty to the dynasty from spreading. It could be said that they performed auditing tasks to check the loyalty of the Han to the Manchus. Decline and Dissolution Like all Chinese empires, the Qing dynasty began to suffer more and more from the passing of the years and the growth of its detractors. But this case was abysmally different from what had happened in previous periods, since the social and political context was different. The Chinese people were tired of imperial rule and an obsolete form of government. They constantly saw the advances of neighbouring countries and felt humiliated. The social context became untenable after being humiliated in more than one war. Intellectuals and artists began to promote the movement that had already crossed most of the countries of the world, the revolution. The main person responsible for this movement was Sun Yat-sen, who was considered the father of modern China. The spread of revolutionary ideas reached all the inhabitants, who rose up against the empire and ended up raising it to the ground in the course of time. Puyi, the last emperor of the dynasty, abdicated in 1912, and the Republic of China was born, under the rule of Sun Yat-sen, the country's first president. The legacy of the Qing dynasty continues to this day, as it was once one of the largest empires in the world, in fact, it is the fourth largest empire in history. As the last dynasty before the birth of the country as an official state, it almost directly influences the government to this day. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.